Hi, and welcome to this Ulster University postgraduate webinar series. And today we're going to be talking about one of our most popular uh, postgraduate taught courses, which is the Postgraduate Certificate, Diploma and MSc in Geographic Information Systems. Uh, my name is Adrian Moore and I'm the, the course director for these courses. And I'm joined today with, by, with two of our current uh, students on the course. We've got Molly Williams, who's a full-time distance learning student from, from Bristol in England. And we've got Jane McAleese, who is a part-time student. Um, she's also working uh, in local government here in Northern Ireland as a GI consultant. Now, just before we get into the details of the, the specific course, just want to run through a few things, uh, general points from, from Ulster University that maybe you may or may not be aware of. Uh, really starting with the general benefits uh, of studying here at Ulster. Uh, we've got over 200,000 alumni uh, across the world. And from those alumni, we've got very detailed information about the benefits they get uh, from postgraduate study. And you can see them lined up there. You know, you get excellent conversion course to be able to change career, uh, competitive edge in employment, personal fulfillment. Um, you've been taught by, by experts in the field. You've got a great support study environment. Um, you get excellent academic as well as professional qualifications. And you've also got great links with industry bodies and employers through Norway University but the alumni as well. And we'll come to, to some of those points, particularly uh, relating to our course, things like the links to the industry bodies, as well as the conversion course um, and the supported study environment uh, in, in the rest of the presentation here. So in terms of benefits, I'm sure you're, if you're thinking of a postgraduate course, you're, you've probably already thought about this and, and what the, the sort of trade-off of the cost benefits are in terms of investing time and money in, in a postgraduate course uh, and we've got some figures here that we've got from a variety of different sources you can see that uh, compared to uh, an undergraduate uh, coming from a university a postgraduate earns approximately eight thousand pounds uh, per annum above over and above the average uh, undergraduate person who goes into employment and that sort of accumulates over a work life to about £266,000, which is not insignificant. Uh, you can also see that postgraduates progress 20% faster uh, than graduates in professional settings. And a really important one is that 90.7% uh, of UK full-time leavers at postgraduate level are working in professionally related occupations. And that's compared to uh, a quite healthy 72.6 percent but you can see it's substantially better so the benefits of actually taking on a postgraduate course uh, are, are actually quite substantial so what are we offering here in terms of postgraduate study uh, at ulster uh, a few things really general points uh, across the board we, we we offer flexible modes of study that's everything from full-time uh, part-time as well as distance learning and that's very pertinent to, to this particular session here because our courses are all by distance learning they are full-time and part-time as well and you've got flexibility in time in terms of the types of study levels that you can do so you can register for a postgraduate certificate or a diploma and then that will lead into uh, directly into a master's program but we also have uh, what we call short courses which are just individual standalone uh, subject modules that you can take at your own leisure and then you can build up credits towards um, those other qualifications from the search, the dip and the masters. Uh, in terms of industry recognition, you know, we work with a very broad range of industry networks and our courses are uh, very much linked uh, and we get input from from the, the local industries and international industries that relate to our courses. And you also get professional accreditation where that's appropriate. So, for example, in the courses that we provide in the GIS, courses, you automatically get free student membership of the UK Association for Geographic Information, uh, and you get a, a, a reduced rates for attendance at a variety of different events all around the country. Uh, and you also get free student membership of the Institute of Environmental Sciences. And those courses that we have and their postgraduate courses in GIS are all accredited by the Institute of Environmental Sciences. So you've got that industry recognition and industry link with, with your courses. 
How do you apply? Well, the, the application is very, very simple. We, you just apply straight online uh, using that uh, link there on, on screen. Uh, and we don't have any official closing date for most of our postgraduate courses. So it's just a rolling, it's a rolling uh, date for applications. And depending on when you apply, you can then join the course at the next available time when the, when the courses actually start. Um, most courses, uh, the, the places are limited and it, it is advisable to um, to apply early. It's not so important for this particular courses for ours because we take applications right up until uh, the, the start of September. And because we're distance learning and we're flexible in terms of the numbers that we can accommodate by bringing on additional staff, uh, we're less restricted in terms of numbers. Um, you can apply for multiple courses, so you can apply for the GIS courses, you can apply for environmental management courses, you can apply for remote sensing courses, you can make multiple applications and then depending on what, on how successful you are in terms of offers, you can then make a choice as to which one you want to start and when you want to start. Um, and you have to make sure you fully complete the application. But if you have any problems or queries, then there's there's uh, a good support online and you just have to fill in the, the little form with your query and someone will get back to you within a very, very short space of time. So very easy, simple process for applying. The other thing, obviously, is the money side of things um, and in terms of how much it costs and, and what you're going to invest. Um, from Ulster University, our courses start from a master's course, full master's course in a one year full time uh, is £6,270. And that's that's for this year. And if you're applying for further years down the line, you know, those those um, numbers will, will obviously change slightly. And there's a whole variety of different ways to pay. We've got flexible payment options. Um, and if you're uh, an Ulster University alumni, if you've done an undergraduate degree or another degree from Ulster, you get an automatic 10% discount on that fee. And if you pay the fee up front, you get a 5% discount. Uh, and there are also a variety of different loans and ver different types of loans of up to 5,500 that are available as well. And you can check that out from, from the Ulster website and, and from the finance side. So there's a variety of different ways to do it. But you can see that, you know, when you look at the average income of a postgraduate student, it's 8,000 pounds uh, more than an than than ordinary, straightforward undergraduate. Um, and the course, a full-time course costs you £6,270. You can really see um, where the financial benefits are. However, it's, it is understandable and difficult that people have to try and manage uh, the payments and the finances. So looking at our particular courses then, what I'm going to talk about today here is the Postgraduate Certificate, the Postgraduate Diploma and the MSc in Geographic Information Systems. Just a little overview then of what we do. The courses are delivered by the School of Geography and Environmental Sciences, of which I'm a, a member of academic staff. Um, the courses are all fully online. We have no on-campus teaching, uh, and they're delivered by distance learning through our virtual learning environment called Blackboard. Um, and that's the postgraduate courses in geograph geographic information. So, so I'm only talking about the GIS course here. Um, we have been doing this course now for over 25 years. We've had 25 years experience of developing uh, and delivering these courses very, very successfully. And we've been delivering the courses uh, for nearly 20 years online. Uh, using e-learning environment, and that's that's actually quite rare. Um, we were one of the first uh, universities to actually put our courses online, so we've got 20 years of experience in doing that, and that is actually um, that contributes to the success of the program as well as the support that we're able to give to our students. Uh, you can choose to study for the award of either a postgraduate certificate or a postgraduate diploma or a master of science. And you can do them either full time or part time. Generally, what you do is you apply for the postgraduate diploma. And if you want to leave early, you can then do a certain amount of modules and you can leave with the, the postgraduate certificate. Uh, then the postgraduate diploma is, is the main um, taught component. And then if you want to do a master of science, then you move on and you do a dissertation in, in the last semester. Uh, bit of information then just about the types of people who take our courses and they generally fall into two sort of categories or cohorts. And the first one of those people who just want to enter the GIS uh, employment area for the very first time or they want to add GIS to their current skill set to enhance their employability and that really uh, is mostly recent graduates 
uh, from from universities and on related subjects or, or broadly related subjects, but also those people who want to just a, a, a complete change in career. We've had people who are, who are lawyers who have been uh, working in uh, in law for in the law industry for a long time, and then they've decided they want a career change and they just quit their job and they come and they do the GIS and they take a change in direction. So the other uh, cohort, and um, it's about 50-50% that we have on our courses. Uh, we have uh, people already in GI related employment and they who, who want to just broaden their skills and their knowledge with a general view to sort of either um, improving the career and many people do it because particularly if you're in, in, in government positions, you know, having a master's in a particular subject can help your, your prospects as well as um, having those specific skills. So that's generally the cohort, but we do get all sorts of different people uh, from different backgrounds applying, but it's generally, you're, they, they fall into one of those two categories. A um, few more highlights then. So you know that I've already said that we've got 25 years of doing this. You're joining a well-established uh, course with an excellent reputation, both uh, regionally, nationally, and internationally. And that's based on, on feedback and awards. It's not just based on, on us uh, uh, praising ourselves. Um, you can develop and improve uh, your employability, professional, and academic skills, and you get extensive hands-on practice with key software. That's one thing about our courses. You know, they are very strongly uh, practically and industry oriented rather than academically oriented per se. Um, you can you will obtain free student uh, copies of GIS remote sensing and statistical software. So you get ArcGIS Pro, Erdas Imagine, um, SPSS, those you get uh, as part of your course. And really interesting, and hopefully this is uh, will of interest to most people, that not everyone likes doing exams. So these courses are assessed entirely by coursework. Um, and that coursework uh, is mostly based on report writing, group discussions, group work, um, uh, practical classes and practical assessments based on practical classes. Uh, so there are no formal exam ex examinations. And that's because one, the courses are professionally related and, and academic exams are not the best way to assess students, but it's also due to the nature uh, of the courses and the way we deliver the courses online, formal examinations are not a, a very good way of, of doing that. And then the other interesting point here is you have, we have two intakes per year uh, for the part-time study. Now, full-time studies will begin the course in late September, and that's there's only one entry point if you're starting on the full-time basis. But if you're a part-time student or you're interested in joining part-time, you can enroll for a start date of either um, September, uh, which is the normal uh, start of the academic year uh, with semester one, or indeed you can start in the beginning of semester two in January. So um, there's, two, there's a bit of flexibility there and when you join the course, uh, however, I have to note that in terms of the January intake, given the way the modules are delivered, there, there does tend to be a slightly less choice in terms of the options of modules you can take if you start in the, in the January intake. A few more highlights. Um, as I say, this is a fully online course. Um, that you can study from almost anywhere in the world. So that the real, that's one of the beauties of this course here. And given the the the, the COVID situation over the last year, it hasn't really uh, hindered us in terms of our ability to deliver the course. Um, it might affect some people in terms of study themselves, but in terms of the the course being online, you can actually study anywhere in the world you like, and you can access the materials at any time you like as well. You can set already, you can study part-time or full-time, and that means that you can choose the different times that you study each week to suit yourself. Um, substantial relevant work experience may be accepted in place of standard entry requirements. Again, this is a really interesting uh, element that we have here that normally you have got the standard academic requirements, which is a minimum of the BSc in a related subject, uh, honours level with a, a 2-2 classification. However, we do and we regularly do uh, accept people onto the course who have alternative uh, relevant work experience. So it might be someone who, don't, who doesn't have a geography or environmental science or a related degree, but you've actually been working and using GIS for a number of years in your job. You can actually apply for us and we will consider you based on your experience and not necessarily on your um, initial or your academic qualifications. 
And again, I said, you can start, there's three different awards that we make. Um, it's the master's degree, the PG diploma, and the postgraduate certificate. And the other way you can do it is you can actually enroll for individual modules. As we said, that's just the, what we call continuous professional development route, or you can just take a module at a time or a subject at a time, and then you can build up the credit uh, that will get you onto, and you can transfer then onto the postgraduate certificate or diploma at a later date. So that it's, it's totally flexible in terms of when you study, how you study, where you study, and what pace you study at. Um, in terms of the awards then, just a wee bit more detail, uh, you, can, you can apply to study for the certificate, the postgraduate diploma or the masters. Now the postgraduate certificate is, is the first level uh, of award and that requires uh, passes in four subject modules and that would take three to four months full time or eight months over two semesters part time. Um, you would generally, most people would apply for the postgraduate diploma and that requires passes in eight subject modules and that are taken over the eight months, which is the two semesters uh, in the year. So that's September to December and then January until May. Uh, or it will take, that's full time and it takes two years uh, academic uh, part time. That would mean you do uh, first first semester, first year, second semester, first year, and then first semester, second year, second semester, second year, and you would take two modules in each of those semesters to get you the eight. So it's it's a bit more relaxed, a bit slower. It's a virtually half pace to the to the full time masters. And then the the MSc uh, itself requires completion of the postgraduate diploma, and then after the postgraduate diploma, uh, you can then move on to the the masters, which is basically an independent piece of uh, academic research and a research project. And uh, normally, when you combine the PG dip and the masters all together, it's twelve months full time, or in the in the in the part time mode, it takes three years. And there's just a little note there. You can also take modules of standalone to short courses and build those up. So you can actually just, you can take longer than three years. You can just do a module a year or two modules a year, and you can build up your credits um, over a longer period of time to the point that you can either, if you've got the four modules, you could then take the PG cert, eight for the PG dip, and then after that, you could even move on to the masters. So you don't necessarily have to register initially for one of those course courses. You can just do the modules uh, one by one. Looking a wee bit at the course content then, the course is taught by a combination of both compulsory and optional uh, subject modules. Uh, I'll come to those in a minute. Uh, each module or subject or course uh, is, is taught over a six week period. So um, if you're studying part time, you will take two modules in the first semester. So you'll take one module from week one to six and the second module from week seven to 12. If you're doing full time, you take two modules in the first six weeks and two modules in, in the second six weeks of the semester. Um, and they incorporate, they're all incorporated a combination of both recorded lectures uh, and, and online practicals. And they're all delivered by our virtual learning environment, Blackboard. And most of you have been in, in uh, higher education or even uh, fur further or secondary education uh, will be familiar with those virtual learning environments. And ours is called Blackboard. Uh, all the materials, or most materials are uploaded in advance, generally weekly or weekly in advance, and they're available to students to access in your own time. So there's absolutely no need for you to be uh, make yourself available every Monday and every Thursday at seven o'clock in the evening for a live lecture. All the materials are recorded and made available to you, and you can access them at your own time. Uh, so that means that the, the courses, they're completely flexible, and there's no need to be available for any specific live classes at any times. Sometimes uh, in my modules, I would have a, a, just an open live session, but it's non-compulsory for people to attend if they want for questions and answers uh, about the module. And those sessions as well, they're not compulsory, but they are recorded. And then if you can't make that session at that particular time, you can go back and access the recording through Blackboard uh, at another time. Um, on the course content, all modules, they're coordinated and mostly delivered by experienced academic staff and they're supported by a range of e-tutors and e-mentors. And that's really important because those e-tutors and e-mentors, uh, as well as the academic staff, mean that we can provide 24-7 uh, support for students. So if you're 
online, you're accessing materials at whatever time and you have a problem, you can put a query into the discussion boards and either the member staff or the e-tutors or the e-mentors uh, will come online or come on board and try and help you. And most of our e-tutors and e-mentors are actually ex-graduates uh, uh, from our courses. So they've been through the courses, they know what the issues are, they can understand what the issues and the problems are. And in many instances, particularly on the practical issues, they're the best place to give you support. In terms of the modules then, and this, this is in regards to the postgraduate diploma, there are four compulsory modules that you must complete uh, to be awarded the, 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 uh, the degree of uh, postgraduate diploma. They are principles of GIS, spatial data management, introduction to remote sensing, and GIS databases. If you choose to take the postgraduate certificate, there's only one compulsory module, which is the principles of GIS. And then you make up the other four modules for the PG cert or the eight modules for the PG diploma with the other optional modules that are available. And you can see a list of them there. I'm not going to go through them all. It's everything from web-based GIS, uh, then we've got GIS Business and Society, uh, and then we've got more details and detailed specialist uh, modules in, for example, photogrammetry and advanced image analysis, as well as environmental management. So there's a, there's a real broad range of options there, as well as those core compulsory modules that you'd be required to take. Um, in terms of other course options, um, you can also enroll if you're particularly interested in, environment, in the environmental side and environmental management, you can actually enroll and for a degree uh, in GIS with environmental management. And that allows you to take uh, more environmental management modules along with the GIS modules that are delivered as part of our environmental management postgraduate diploma and master's course. So there's a bit of flexibility there that you've got an environmental management pathway through the GI course there as well. And then more recently, we've introduced a new course. Uh, oh, it's only part time at the moment, but that's in remote sensing and GIS. So if you're particularly interested in, in remote sensing or you have an equal interest in remote sensing in GIS, you could actually uh, consider uh, applying for that course if you like. And that's also delivered by the same team uh, here in, in the School of Geography and Environmental Sciences. And you can see yeah, you can get information on that on the Ulster Postgraduate uh, Prospectus. In terms of just finishing off then career opportunities, you know, you're going to be investing a lot of time and money in, in, in a postgraduate course and you want to know where am I going to go and what's the career opportunities like. Uh, and hopefully if you're interested in GIS, you might have already looked at this, um, but the GIS and geospatial technologies, they really now underpin a massive, really fast growing multi-billion dollar uh, mainstream IT industry. I uh, have a few figures there from, from some technical uh, reports that show that that industry, the GI industry has been growing at about 10% compound annual uh, rate of growth in every year over the last 10 years. And that has continued, it has just slightly gone down uh, with COVID, but nothing like most other industries. And even in the last recession, the GI industry was the one industry that actually uh, started to increase. So you're joining the course at a very good time. You're joining at a course when there is high demand across a whole range of different uh, professional and industry areas looking for uh, GIS technicians, analysts, surveyors, mapping officers, you know, a lot of people going to GI consultants, uh, sales and marketing, uh, as well as going into academia to do further research, either as academic researchers or to do funded PhD programs. So if you've got a master's in GIS, you might be interested in even going further academically uh, and taking on a, a, a PhD in the subject area. Other career opportunities, types of employers. Um, we've highlighted a whole lot of lists there. I'm not going to go through them all. I mean, the, the breadth and depth of um, employers, uh, potential employers for, for GA professional graduates is just uh, expanding by the year. A lot of people go and work in the mapping agencies, such as Ordnance Survey Northern Ireland, Ordnance Survey UK, satellite navigation technology companies are growing, uh, environmental consultancies and renewable energy companies. Uh, are big, big employers of our graduates. You know, there's an awful lot going on in the green tech uh, industry and the green tech area. Um, so th that's a, a rapidly growing area for GI uh, expertise. Also in regional and local 
government um, as well as pseudo government or um, government agencies such as the utilities, water and electricity and infrastructure, also big employers of GI graduates. And even today, you know, the mining uh, mineral exploitation and oil industry are also uh, big employers. So that's what that just gives you an example of the breadth of opportunities. If you do a, a GIS master's course, it opens up a whole range of different areas that maybe you never thought of before. But the skills that you get and you develop uh, and that you, you bring from the GIS master's course will open up so many more opportunities for you in an area that's increasing. And there is definitely a demand for, for GI positions. Um, in terms of student feedback and the student experience, that's one thing we're extremely proud of. We've worked very, very hard over 25 years um, to build the course, but not only to build the, the course uh, both technically and academically, but also uh, the support that we try and provide to our uh, to our students. And we realise that with a distance learning course, it's very, very difficult. And you know that that remoteness, you have to put in more effort. And we have sort of refined a lot of tools and support mechanisms to do that. And that really has been reflected in the, the feedback that we've got from the courses over many, many years. Um, if you go onto our website, you'll see a lot of examples of, of past students and what they've done and what their views are. I've just put a couple up here just to finish off. You know, fantastic course, well delivered and structured, relevant content, interesting assignments, thoroughly enjoyable. Uh, the course has far exceeded my expectations, is excellent, will benefit multiple prospective students from a range of different backgrounds, supporting what I've already said. The course is detailed, very enjoyable. I personally picked up on several skills which I have been able to incorporate into my work environment. And then I'll finish with the last one here, getting a job with a GI company, being promoted within a year and implementing skills learned and having the confidence to pursue more challenging and complex GIS tasks should be evidence that the course is a success. So there's there's a whole um, raft of, of feedback uh, from our students about that. And, and you're, you're welcome to go and have a look at that or come back to me and I can provide more information on that. But we're very, very proud of the course and its reputation um, uh, in the, not only just with our students, but within the GI industry and our employers. Our employers come back uh, time and time again when the employer graduates and actually tell us you know, what, what a great job they've done and how skillful and how well prepared they are for, for the workplace. Um, no, that's that's just students saying it, and, and I can tell you this, and it's probably not best coming from me. Um, so I was going to maybe just uh, go into a question and answer session. I'll just skip over that slide. COVID is not really uh, relevant to us, which is a great thing. And I think that's one of the big attractions possibly to uh, to applying for a distance learning course in this current environment. So it doesn't apply to us, but the university, obviously, if you have to come on campus for any reason, the, the university is very well covered in terms of preparations and, 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 and support and, and care for students. Um, but I think what we just do now is I would like to bring in um, my two colleagues from uh, on, who are currently on the course. Uh, we have Molly and we have Jane. Um, and guys, maybe if, if I ask a question, maybe Molly, I'll start with you. Molly, you're on the Molly's on the. Uh, maybe you can introduce yourself as well, Molly. You're on the full time uh, GIS course. Could you maybe tell us um, why did you uh, pick this particular course and this mode of study as well? Uh -huh, yeah. Um, hi everyone. Um, yeah. So I uh, I live in Bristol um, and. Partly the reason I chose the course was because of the convenience of it. Um, I didn't want to leave Bristol um, and they didn't do GIS at the uni here. So it was ideal for me to be able to do it from home um, and learn about GIS and begin my career in GIS um, just from the comfort of my own home, really. Um, yeah, it was. Uh, so, yeah, convenience is like a, a big thing. Um, I could just like fit it in my own time, manage my own time. Um, and yeah, fit it around other commitments, which was which was really good. Oh, it has. I, I'm still doing it. I'm talking in the past tense, but <laughs> it is still really good. Um, yeah, it's it's been a fun year. Great, thanks. And Jean, maybe Jean, you're doing the uh, part time um, MSc. You're now at the final stage of your dissertation. But maybe Jean, could you tell us why you picked the course um, and why you picked the part time mode of study? 
Yeah, so um, I chose part-time mode as I work full-time in local government in Northern Ireland. So it, the flexibility of being able to do it in my own time and coming home in the evening times and doing it rather than being, and it's sort of, it's extended for the three years rather than trying to fit it all into the one year. So that was a key selling point for me, the time management behind it. Um, I took on the Masters because in local government to sort of advance my career to get up to the managerial positions. Uh, a master's or postgraduate degree is highly sought after. So I sort of took it as to further my skills as well and then just for career progression too. That's great. And you actually um, you actually work as a GI um, sort of specialist in, in local government, James, uh, having come, gone into that from, from undergraduate. Yep. Okay. Uh, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, I know. Uh, no, I was just going to say that I had completed my uh, undergrad with Ulster University, and yeah. it was through my placement that I'd got my position in local government. So it's all been very useful going to Ulster University for me, anyways. <laughs> okay, that's brilliant. Thanks, Jane. And then maybe Molly, I'll go back to you. Can, is there anything that you could pick out about the course that you think is particularly good? Um, that you could maybe share? Um, yeah, so I think um, the, there's quite a broad range of modules, which was really good. Um, I feel like I've learned a lot of things that, so I'm now starting to apply for jobs and all of the things they ask for, I feel like I've got from this course. So things like coding um, with Python um, and, and databases and just generally being able to like competent at ArcGIS um, that's been really good to have like that kind of um, broad broad range of broad range of skills from it um, also yeah the flexibility of it um, um, was it has been really good um, like there's no set times I think as you said in the presentation there's no set times for any lectures and practicals and stuff so that's um, been a big big thing just being able to kind of yeah fit it around what I do um, yeah um and i'd uh, definitely recommend the work experience or if like if you're, if you're in a group that are looking to get into a career in gis and aren't already in it then um that is a, a module i did with and i got um a placement with ordnance survey northern ireland which was has been really useful to me um i feel like that has definitely <laughs> definitely been a benefit of doing this doing this particular course that's great and that's good that you mentioned the work experience module there which is an optional one and, and um mm -hmm. for particularly for people who, may, who maybe haven't had any experience in the GI industry that that's a very good option to take because it gives you that insight and a bit of experience and also maybe leads on to other things molly for example maybe you i think yeah. you're <laughs> your dissertation now linked, mm -hmm. linked to that to that work so it's it's, it's yeah. very important Jane, is there anything about the course that you, from the part-time perspective, that you would um, like to share? Yeah, well, as Molly had said, um, the coding elements of it, I think there's two or three modules where we go into Python scripting and then database management. And we've also got the web GIS, where you create your own website built in HTML coding. I had never done anything like that or even thought that that was related to GIS. But now whenever you're going back into work and you're seeing all the different things that you can do through the website or even just changing colors on GIS applications and, you know, it's been really useful stuff. I didn't think that I ever needed to know, but it's been so helpful in my role and the remote sensing as well. It's become a big thing in council. Uh, we're a coastal council, so uh, coastal erosion has come up now in the past couple of months. So we're going out with the drone and using remote sensing to monitor that, which again, I learned all those skills using Airdas Imagine as the programming software through Ulster. So it's definitely been useful. It's built on stuff that we've learned. I did a geography degree as my undergrad and you touch on everything at undergrad level. And then this takes your skills set to like a whole other level. <laughs> 
That's brilliant. Um, and can I maybe ask again, maybe just start with Molly, in terms of the um, the support mechanisms from, you know, just general support for the course, but also within the modules, and I'm thinking of um, what, what you think of the e-tutors and the e-mentors um, and how they maybe contribute to the student or help the student experience. Um, Molly, have you any sort of views or, or on that? Um, yeah, I think the, the support has been really good, actually. Um, it is like quite daunting going into doing a master's like by yourself from home, like and not seeing anyone. But like actually the first module, the first couple of modules, they like introduce themselves, the e-tutors and the lecturers and like let you know they're around and they're really fast at replying as well um, if you need help with anything. Um, so and that, yeah they've done it all before so they they also normally know what your problem is and will be able to fix it um like quite quickly um, i think yeah the discussion pages on black useful for me and also the, the feedback um get from different projects so exams you do end up a lot of coursework um but that has been like fine because the first modules you get loads of good feedback about how you write and things like that and then you can apply it to all of the later modules as well okay thanks i think we lost your your voice your speaker a wee bit there but definitely got most of that molly jane is there anything on the on the oh, support and feedback that maybe you have experienced that you want to share yeah well just on the e-tutors and e mentors they've been amazing throughout Anytime that you need to ask a question, you can just stick it onto the discussion board. And usually there is somebody on there monitoring on their back within an hour, even if you're sending it at 11 o'clock at night, which was most of the time for me. And even the lecturers, everybody's really approachable. It's not like you can't speak to anybody if you have an issue with the core module. You just email the module coordinator and they can they get back to you and there's no big issues or big deals about it at all. Brilliant, great. And I think I'll just um, finish off with one last question to both of you. Um, would you have any hints or guidance to students who will be starting next year that now that you've been through the course or most of the course that, you know, in hindsight, it would be good to know or good to uh, have knowledge of in advance? Molly, maybe would you want to go first? um yeah i guess um what i didn't know before i like it is important to be organized um like normally at uni you have like a set timetable um and th there isn't that with this so it's important to like keep on top of um your work i mean i yeah it, it was a like when i felt like the first couple of modules it like became very like obvious that i needed to like motivate myself to do the work and like make sure I did it every week um but like you you get used to it and then it, then it's okay like once you, yeah once you got used to the format it's it's fine um also um I think someone mentioned this like at the beginning as like a hint and I think um it was useful um just GIS can be quite frustrating at times like when things don't work but um if you just like take a moment like take a break for like half an hour or something come back to it, it actually has that, that has worked so well for me <laughs> so many times just like coming back to it later and then you figure out how to fix it and yeah <laughs> that would be my hint <laughs> that's brilliant thanks very much uh jane finally have you anything you would advice you would give to uh prospective students coming in next year Mine is a similar experience to Molly, being organised, especially on the part time where you've got a bit where you're working and you have to set aside time. It's just getting into that routine again of setting the time aside and getting the work done. But yeah, that would be <laughs> my advice is just being organised. OK, that's brilliant. Thanks very much. Um, OK, folks, well, look, that's the, the, the sort of end of the session. Um, Hi, Andy. Can yes. I just ask you, there are a couple of questions in your chat box oh, as well. Sure, I'll just I just them out okay. to you. So okay. the first one is, does the course cover management of GIS infrastructure such as SDEs, etc.? 
is SDI, Spatial Data Infrastructure. Yes, actually, I cover that in my module on GIS and Business and Society. So we, we do cover GI management and spatial data infrastructures, both regionally, nationally, and internationally as well. So yes, we do. Yeah. Brilliant. Next question. Does it look at cloud-based services or developing web apps? Yes, we have a module on web applications and GIS, um, which is which is taught by Sad Body, and we have two new modules with two new members of staff actually. Uh, Bob McNabb uh, teaches um, some elements uh, working uh, from the cloud. So yes, they're they're both in, they're both included. Brilliant. And the another question: Does it cover Arc GIS Pro? Yes, uh, as of this year, we have moved from um, ArcGIS to ArcGIS Pro. Um, so all of our GIS, uh, or most of our GIS uh, materials, practicals, uh, and skills are being taught on the Esri ArcGIS Pro platform. Brilliant. And another question, is there a minimum spec for laptop because of the type of work you're doing? There is a minimum spec for laptops, and when you go through the application process, we act, one of the questions is we set out what the minimum specification is, and then you can you can uh, work off that specification um, and then come back to us if you have any problems. So yes, that's that's brilliant. Thanks so much, Eddie. Okay, thanks, Avril. Sorry, I, I I had sort of missed those questions. Well, well, folks, I think that's that's really all we wanted to cover today. If you have any further questions or any issues, please feel free to uh, email me on a.murray.ulster.ac.uk, uh, and I'll be more than happy to reply to you. And I'll even be happy to do a, a live uh, call either on Skype or Zoom or Teams, uh, whatever suits you. I'm happy to do that. Um, and also, if you want to um, sign up for other PG postgraduate events and this recording of this event here will be through the ulster.ac.uk for us PG events uh, web link you're, you're ha happy to do so so thanks very much everyone for coming along and also thanks very much to uh, to Avril and the marketing team for supporting this and also to Jane and Molly for um for taking the time to come along today i know you're very busy people but um having uh, actual students on the on the webinar been able to answer questions and give advice i think is uh, very very useful so thanks to everyone